What's in that box? Great question, Leandra. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fourth exhaust. Mm -hmm. In my last flight at the beach, the exhaust had actually cracked. Uh, it cracked. Clint <laughs> just um, ripped it from the tree, I think. The Parajet was really cool. They sent me out one really quickly. If you own an older version of the Moster 185, then you may experience some sort of breakdowns with the exhaust. When Daddy flies the 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 Parada motor, he he um, pulls the engine and it flies because he runs, and then it flies up the air. Right, and then the exhaust breaks. Yeah. But on the newer ones, that's not a problem. So if you do have one of the newer ones, good for you. You probably won't need to change your exhaust at all. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the connection points for the most 25 where the exhaust comes onto this. So the paramotor's uh, exhaust is connected to the frame at one, two, three, four, five different locations where there's five bolts and then you also have four springs. So the bolts, the bolts are pretty straightforward. You just simply have to take those off or some people find some trouble is taking the springs off because um, they're on there really tight. I'm gonna hand the camera to my four-year-old daughter and see how she can handle being a camera operator. All right, come here. Okay. Okay. Okay, keep it really still. So what we have here is a 10 millimeter socket. And that's because all of the exhaust is connected by 10 millimeter nuts. Mia, don't move it around too much, okay? It's so heavy. Okay, sit down, sit down right here. Take two. All right, we've got a 10 millimeter socket attached to this extender, to the wrench. This extender piece allows me to take this off without it, this part banging on the exhaust pipe itself or any of the motor components. Set aside. The search is on for a 10 millimeter wrench. It looks like there's one size missing and it happens to be a 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, it's a 13. Oh, oh. This should do it. Let's try this one out. Make your life a little bit easier before you get started and take the propeller off. Take the, the air box off as well. And then you're gonna have a much easier time accessing the nuts that connect the exhaust to the paramotor frame. Okay. And lastly, the air box, which is connected right here by just a Phillips. Easy peasy. So now I have a lot more access to get to these bolts. I'm gonna go back for my 10 millimeter wrench. So at this point, you have to take the springs off in order to be able to access the last two nuts that connect directly to the motor head itself. After that, we'll be able to take the exhaust off and put on the new one. So the idea is to be able to grab onto the spring somehow. If you don't have like a, a regular or a huge set of tools available to you, um, you can get a coat hanger and then straighten it out, bend it, wrap it through the spring and then grab a normal set of pliers, grab onto that with the pliers and then force it down. So, right here we have the springs and what we need to do is grab onto them and then force it down. Oh, there's one, there's two. Now coming through the back, there's three. Oh, will you set the camera? On that step. And then, two hands, just kind of hold it up. Oh, there we go. And it's off. When the exhaust breaks, the problem really exists in this first, like, bend in the exhaust. The exhaust connects right here. The vibrations and the heat coming from the motor head causes this area to be particularly vulnerable. If you wanna see where the damage is now, a little closer. Can you see that crack on your, from your perspective? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, so. Let's bend it. Now you can see 
There's a massive crack that forms here. How can you tell that your exhaust is starting to malfunction? <laughs> the first thing that is a tall tail, tell tail sign, tall tail sign. The tall tail sign for there being a problem with your exhaust is the increase in noise. You also might feel some vibration and a later stage of a, an exhaust break when it really starts to compromise the engine entirely is when you have a massive loss of power. That's because the exhausts are designed to retain some of that pressure that's required to create the power in the motor in the first place. Okay, so now we can actually remove the final part, which is just this connector piece. <clears throat> you can also see that some of the oil was collecting on the bottom of the motor head, which is also a good sign that uh, there may be a leak or a gap. All right, we're gonna go and get the new exhaust that just arrived in the mail all the way from England. I just got your headphones dirty. It's okay. Really big thank you to Ben Smith out at Parajet. I feature him whenever I have a chance because he's always helping me out, keeping me in the air. Parajet in general does a really good job at uh, getting parts delivered if you ever need them. Wow. Oh my gosh. They sent me the brand new one. No way. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Wow. Now I'm pumped up because this is the brand new exhaust from Viterazzi for all of the Moster 185s. I feel like Viterazzi's Moster 185 is the best paramotor engine available. <sighs> the drawback has been the older generations of exhausts and I really doubt that I will ever need another exhaust again because I've heard so many wonderful things about this one. What they did was they created another joint right here with additional springs. And what this does is it reduces the vibration because these things do take a very big beating with a with an angry little two-stroke motor. I mean, this thing is a, is a powerful two-stroke motor. We'll go ahead and put this on. I'm gonna remove the springs from the lower portion. What I'm gonna do is place this on with the new gasket. We're just gonna slide this on, get a nice fit, push it up all the way. And I'm gonna take this. So I'm gonna slide a lock washer on. I'm gonna put the, the nut on. I'm not gonna tighten them all the way at this point because I'm gonna use the torque wrench to make sure we get an exact measurement an exact pressure on these nuts. So I've got these four different locations that are gonna to require to be tightened down, but there is no specific measurement or torque specification on those nuts. I'm gonna go washer, then nut. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this one first using my 10 millimeter socket, combined with the extension so that I can easily reach back in there. Because of that rubber spacer, it can like want to bounce back like that. So one of the tricks is to really brace it. I'm just gonna tighten up the other ones really quickly. So basically, this has a set of numbers here on the bottom. You've got one side that has foot pounds, the other side has uh, Newton meters. So on this side, basically what I wanna do is you bring it all the way back down, then you wanna spin it until zero, right here on the threads. Zero is lined up with the line. So for example, we're doing 24. So I want the zero to land right center with the center line at the 20. And then I'm gonna go over four spots for 24, 24 pounds. And then I'm gonna lock this down. And when I put on the, the correct piece, right here. The first time I hear that click, 
then I immediately want to release that pressure because that's 24 pounds. Now there's one last nut right there. Two more steps to go. We need to connect these uh, wires, the, the springs, back to this part right here, and then we'll get the heat gun and shrink these. There we go. We got it. It's shrinking. All right, MY20 exhaust, all set. Looks like it worked. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube.